confidence is a preference for the habitual investor in the stock market. But while equities tend to rise over time, when investors are overconfident, bubbles eventually turn into busts. For fund managers, self-confidence isn't just preferred, but essential. In a business where the average manager does worse than a basic index tracker, that's paid far more, self-awareness would lead many to give up. Now, neither investors nor fund managers seem to have all that much confidence at the moment as they worry about the timing of the first Federal Reserve rate rise, about the Chinese economy and about the danger of a commodity and emerging market route sparking global financial troubles. Yet economic forecasts show a surprising lack of volatility. At a time when uncertainty abounds, one might expect a big spread of predictions as some economists prepare to batten down the hatches against a storm ahead, while others are a couple of sheets to the wind. But the opposite seems to be the case. This chart shows one measure of shared beliefs, the standard deviation of economic forecasts, the US in red and the Eurozone in blue. And on here, a low figure means there's a smaller gap between predictions. Now, both of these are close to all-time lows, as economists converge in their outlook, particularly for the Eurozone. Now, some of this is down to the absolute growth in GDP in the Eurozone in particular being far lower, which of course naturally leads to smaller differentials even between optimists and pessimists. But this isn't nearly so much of an issue in the US. Mostly, this is about economists having a strong degree of consensus. They're herding together. Though I should say that we don't, of course, know how much confidence each in economist has in their prediction. So whilst they're all making very similar sorts of forecasts, they might not really believe them as strongly as they have done at other times. Economists in general aren't much good at predicting what the economy is going to do. Frankly, the economy is just too complex. But in the past, when they've all clumped together, it's been a decent indicator that they're wildly overconfident. 2007, just before the global financial crisis, you can see that uh, the standard deviations here were very, very low. 2011 in the Eurozone was, again, the standard deviations were very low. Uh, everyone had very similar sorts of forecasts for growth. And, of course, that was just before the single currencies problems intensified. Uh, in 1997, it's not on the chart, but the US standard deviation of forecasts was very, very low, shortly before the Asian crisis hit. And at the end of 2013 in the US, we saw uh, it hit an all-time low. Um, the uh, US economists were all forecasting almost exactly the same growth in the economy. That was just before the loss of confidence in global growth saw bond yields fall back very, very sharply. In fact, they haven't got back to the 3% that they reached at the end of 2013 since then uh, for US 10-year treasuries. Unlike those previous times, though, there are a few signs of wild overconfidence in markets at the moment following August's correction. Selling China and oil-related assets did become heavily crowded trades, but the recent rebound has removed some at least, and perhaps all, of the excess bearishness there. So that clustering around that trade has reduced a lot. Now, economic forecasts are likely to spread apart again as new data on China and the US arrives. Today we saw some fairly positive jobs figures out of the States. Uh, inflation came in slightly better than expected, uh, although the, some manufacturing data was rather worse than expected. Hopefully, the spread as the uh, forecasts move apart will at least all go in an upward direction. That might help to give some confidence to investors.